Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to put together a marquee sign generator like this using geometry nodes. The fun thing with this project is that it's all procedural and simply based on a curve. Let's get into it. We want to attack this problem in several steps. One is the outer frame of our sign, the second is the back of our sign, and the third is the string of lights. We want our sign to be based on a curve, so we'll start with a curve object. For the moment, I'm just going to use a Bezier circle. Going into my geometry nodes, I'll add a node tree. First, let's create the outline of our sign. To do this, we're going to use a quadrilateral as our profile curve on a curve to mesh node. So here, I'll add curve, curve to mesh, curve primitive quadrilateral, and add my quadrilateral as the profile curve. Of course, I'll want to bring the size down. And by default, this is shaded smooth. So I'm going to want to add a mesh set shade smooth and uncheck shade smooth. Now this ring is much too thick, so we want to thin it out a bit. To do that, we'll reduce the width of our quadrilateral. Just adjust this until you get a thickness that you like. In addition, you can set how deep you want the rim of our sign to be using the height. So this is pretty simple and looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab these three nodes and press Ctrl G to group them. I'll click the up arrow to go back to my main node tree. I'm going to rename this border. Next, we want to set the background. For the moment, I'll disconnect my border and connect my geometry back to my output. Since the thickness of the background is going to be hidden by the border, we don't really need to give it any thickness. It'll just be faked. So for this one, we just want to use a fill curve node. Now, let's go ahead and join these two together. I'll control shift right click on my fill curve and drag it up to my border. Now our border is centered on the XY plane along the Z axis. And our background is sitting exactly on the XY plane. But we want our background to be closer to the back of our sign. To do this, we could either push the background down or bring the border up. Let's go ahead and bring the background down. I'm gonna go into side view and now I'm going to add a geometry set position node. And in the offset, I'll just reduce the Z. This moves the background plane downwards. We'll go ahead and grab these two nodes and group them together. We'll go back to the main tree and rename this one to background. Next, we need our lights. We want our lights to be driven by the shape of the curve. So the easiest thing to do is an instance on points. I'll add an instance on points node have the point source be my curve, and I'll plug it into the join geometry. If you wanted this to be a little fancier and create custom light bulb shapes, you could certainly do that. But in this instance, I'm just gonna go ahead and use an icosphere. I already know that a one meter radius is gonna be way too big, so I'm gonna change this to 0.1, and I'll connect this to the instances. I'll also increase the subdivisions. Now because our Bezier circle only has four control points, we're only getting four light bulbs, and they're on each control point of our circle. We want these to be pushed inwards. My original thought was to just take a copy of my original curve and scale it down. That works fine in the case of something like a circle here, but if we have a more complex shape, that isn't going to work quite right. So instead, we want to use the normals of each point to create the direction in which to push our points. Just to clean things up, I'm going to grab my instance on points and my icosphere and group them together. Now I can just work on my points. Since we want to move our points, we need a set position node. We'll go to geometry, set position, and add it before our instance on points node. Now if we were to change these, we would be moving these points. But we want them to offset in the direction opposite their normal. Remember that the normal is this direction. So one thing we could do is take our normal, scale it by some amount, and then plug that into our offset. So if we go to input normal, vector math, and set it to scale, plug in our normal, and then plug that into our offset, you'll see that we now have control over our points. When our scale is set at zero, our points will be on their original positions. If we increase this, you'll see that the points are going inward. What that's telling us is that the normals of this curve 
are actually pointed inwards instead of outwards. And so we would actually need to scale negative for these to go to the outside and positive to the inside. If we wanted to reverse this, there's a couple of things we could do. The first is we could reverse the direction of the curve. If we use a curve, reverse curve node, and plug that into our original curve, you'll see now that our positive scale has placed the points outside of the curve and a negative scale places them inside. The next thing we could do is flip the normal. We could do this simply by first scaling by negative one. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the reverse curve method for a reason I'll show you in a minute. I'm also going to plug this selection input into my group input. The reason for this is now on my outer group, if I were to add a Boolean input to this selection, I can now toggle this. This will be really handy if we want to be able to reuse this later on different types of curves that might have normals facing in different directions. Let's rename this group to lights and then go back into it. Now let's bring down the scale to something acceptable, say right there. I'm gonna add a couple of materials to this object. The first we will call sign, and the second we will call lights. We'll make the sign a medium gray, and the lights will give some emission. I'll assign the lights shader to these circles by using a set material node, and choosing the light material. Now, you might not like the fact that there's only four lights in here. We can adjust this by resampling this curve. I'll go to Curve, Resample Curve, and drop that here before our set position. I've got two options now. I can use a set count, like 10 lights. I can use Evaluated. That's going to use the resolution of my curve. Or I can use Length. And this is the space in between each light. I'm going to go with Length. If we take a look at the side view of our object, we see that the lights are going down through the background and need to be brought up a little bit. We're gonna do that by using a second set position node, just for clarity, and bumping them up on the Z axis. Let's see how this is working. If I go ahead and edit my curve, you'll see that my lights are following it. And because I used the length method on my resample curve, the lights are staying spaced really well. Now if I wanted to generalize this node so I could use it on more curves later, I might want to take the length and bring it out to my input. Going into my inputs, I'm going to change this name to Light Distance. I also might want to be able to change how far in the lights go. So I'll take this scale and also bring it up. I'll call this Light Inset. And finally, I might want to change what material is being used for the lights. So I'll drag the material also. If I wanted to control the light size, I would also bring the icosphere radius. A couple other things we might want to control on a more generalized node are the height and width of our border. So let's go ahead and jump into our border node and pull those out as well. I'm going to grab these four middle nodes and group them together. Now I'm going to drag out my options to my group input. This selection on the lights was whether or not we wanted to invert the normals of our curve. So I'm just going to call this one flip curve. Another thing we can clean up is that all three of these geometries are coming from the same source. So I'm going to route them together and then delete the second two. Now if I go back to my main tree, you'll see I have one node. I'm going to rename this Marquee Sign. And here you can see I can change the border width and height, the light distance, the light inset, the light size, and if I wanted to change the material, I could do that as well. One thing I forgot to do was be able to set the material for the sign. Let's jump in and do that real quick. Going into the border, I'll add a set material node, and I'll bring that one out. I'll do the same for the background. And then I'll bring both of these to the same socket. I'll name that sign material. Now I can adjust my sign. I'll hit the shield button so that this node group is protected. 
if I were to come back out to my scene and add another curve, we'll go with a Bezier curve this time, and add a node tree, now I could add a group, marquee sign, and drop it on here. Of course, this isn't going to work really well because we don't have a closed path. So I'm going to set the active spline to cyclic and make some adjustments. If I wanted, I could use the draw spline tool. And there we go. We could also use a string to curves node and enter some kind of text. We could take our lights node from earlier, from inside our marquee sign, to create an effect like this. Or, if we had an entirely new node tree with a string to curves and some text, we could add our marquee sign node to that and change our settings until we got something we were happy with. One thing you will notice with the strings to curve node is that it creates curve instances and not curves. So you will want to place a realize instances node before your marquee sign node. Text like this can be really tricky when changing the normals. So you'll have to play with it until you get a result that you like. I hope this tutorial inspires you to make something awesome, and if you are needing marquee signs for your projects, this might be a great way to go about it. Thanks for taking the time to watch my channel. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and until next time, I'll catch you later.